Okay, great. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. um, so one of the things that I was hoping to learn from you and your experience um, with JOIN and with VTaiwan, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm really interested to learn how there may be limits to consensus-driven deliberation platforms mm -hmm. and algorithms, mm -hmm. and maybe correct my understanding because that may not be the case. So I work on a digital democracy project in the United States, mm -hmm. and our focus is to organize collective knowledge into collective deliberation. Mm -hmm. And so we've been operating from the premise that we could structure more knowledge in logically valid ways by instead of getting people to join a platform, gathering the collective knowledge across media types, deconstructing it into logical units, mm -hmm. and then modeling that deliberation. Mm -hmm. um, the success of V Taiwan, uh, setting an example for the world, mm -hmm. makes me pause and second guess if that's the best strategy. So I really wanted to learn more about how um, you know, V Taiwan operated. I saw some of the case studies of how, mm -hmm. how it has been used. And I'm wondering if based on your experience, you see any limits to that because um, mm -hmm. regulation about Uber, for example, or non-consensual sexual images um, seems to be, maybe maybe this isn't the case, but they seem to be like smaller localized issues when larger policy deliberations about complex issues like climate change and some of the most polarizing issues in the United States, I think would be so vast in terms of the relevant knowledge needed to be judged and organized. I'm not sure crowdsourcing would be possible. So, okay. Um, so um, yeah, thank you. That's a very good theoretical question, but I want to clarify two points just to check my understanding. Okay. So first, of course, uh, for example, the Uber case, um, it could be argued that it's vast because it talks about sharing versus geek versus platform economy, data governance, labor rights in the digital age, which is equally large as climate change, uh, right? But uh, or it could be rephrased as you know, someone driving to work without a professional driver license, picking up strangers, they meet on the app, and they do that ten times a day. Right, which is a very, of course, localized, uh, concrete case. Uh, and we, we chose the later phrasing because, exactly as you pointed out, that that's the only way to make focused deliberation, focused conversation work. Uh, but when you say that you, you wish to tackle climate change, are, are you not planning to do something like this, like make it more specific and relevant? Uh, or what, what, what's, the, what's the structure of conversation? Great question. Um, so the specific ontology of the knowledge that we're organizing mm -hmm. is descriptive of the claims that we're seeing that occur in natural language, the English language in the United States territory. There's some internationally relevant content, for example, um, you know, the uh, um, IPCC and things like that, that, information that we'll have to include, but we also have to confine and limit it, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And also, um, when it comes to like organizing logical reasoning, I'm sure you're aware, like there's like an infinite context because mm -hmm. debates can bleed into other debates and be relevant to other debates. And so what we found is a strategy for finding what we call the fundamental questions. So for the United States, there's about six fundamental questions that the American public is divided on when it comes to climate change. Mm -hmm. And what that helps us do is it helps us create that scope of relevance. So it's not, we don't end up with all this repetitive and recursive argumentation, but we can really argue from the general positions to conclusion. So you're absolutely right in which it has to be confined. It's just a different strategy for confinement. Um, but we're, we're hoping to be um, a little bit more exhaustive. And perhaps I, you know, I, I took a look at the V Taiwan platform. I'm familiar with Polis. I was interested to learn if there was any deliberation mechanism on join or if that's yes. just quadrat voting. There is. Uh, uh, we also use Polis on join uh, when uh, when the situation calls for it. Um, so um, so again, just to check my understanding. So uh, is the list of fundamental questions uh, on our website somewhere? And I if it is, can you paste me the link or paste just in the chat? I can tell you, we're we're still in stealth because we have okay. all these standards for okay. what can be published as a meaningful increment. Yeah, maybe just um, a couple examples will, will work. Yeah. yeah. So in the United States, the six fundamental questions of climate change that we mm -hmm. found are: what is climate change? Mm -hmm. Is it happening? What mm -hmm. causes it? Mm -hmm. um, what's the impact of it? What mm -hmm. could or should we do about it? Mm -hmm. And why has this debate lasted for so long? And I've I've given Very a talk about this and uh -huh. gave more detail in a uh -huh. Hope 2020 talk. So I can send you that link, I guess. Um, but it's not written. It's a, a talk that I gave. Okay, but but the uh, mm, but the questions are, as you said, questions. They they're not 
what we say in deliberation or uh, in in focus conversation, uh, they're they're not part of the the mess, right? It 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 is the informed part that when people have a coherent answer to those questions can lead uh, to action, but they are not in the shape of what action must be taken. If I understand it correctly. Well, the the um, the question of what could or should we do about it uh -huh. calls for propositions of what should be the response. Should certain policy or regulations be instituted? Should people be taking personal action? What actions should those be? How do we know that those actions are going to have an impact? How do we measure impact? So mm -hmm. it's almost like most of the questions are about articulating our understanding of the problem and showing how we have different interpretations of what we mean mm -hmm. um, and how we back up that meaning. So for example, with climate change, the first question of the set is what mm -hmm. is climate change, which essentially mm -hmm. means like, what do we mean when we use mm -hmm. the term? Mm -hmm. Because even though there's like standard scientific technical ways of describing mm -hmm. changes mm -hmm. to the climate system mm -hmm. in the public, um, there's argumentation of it being like capital C climate change. It's going to be catastrophic and it's going to be imminent and immediate. And that's that's deliberated on how how quickly are we going to feel how severe effects where in the world um, in the United States, people debate about debate about that. So mm -hmm. it's important when we're talking about subsequent uh, you know, policy suggestions or changes in behavior and regulation that we're mm -hmm. operating on the same definition of climate change because there may be a reason why some people are proposing stronger policy measures than others. It's mm -hmm. because their definition is more catastrophic than another mm -hmm. citizen's definition mm -hmm. of climate change. No, or maybe because they live in catastrophic areas. Exactly, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, right, so, um, so, uh, so um, to, to, to reiterate what I heard, so um, the what should we do uh, part of the question once mm -hmm. we get a coherent answer, is meant to motivate the individuals participating in the conversation to commit uh, to implement such solutions as individuals or as groups or as governments. It's not, uh, for, based on what I hear, uh, meant to um, kind of force a decision uh, unilaterally saying that we have the legitimacy. Uh, one of the solution is to implement, say, the carbon tax or cap and trade system, uh, and then use citing this uh, just like a politician would cite a referendum result, a sortation or a survey, or citizens assembly citing this, saying that, okay, now we have the mandate uh, to do some radical, drastic change. So it's, it's mm -hmm. more, more voluntary, more grassroots, instead of a, a more top-down uh, result, uh, when we call the kind of bindingness uh, of the, the process. Is that correct? Yes, it's definitely more of a grassroots. It's not meant to be binding or forceful mm -hmm. at all. It's just meant to be a tool um, that states we've processed this content. We've mm -hmm. you know crunched these YouTube videos through mm -hmm. which you've expressed yourself. Mm -hmm. um, we've looked at uh, scholarly articles and books and podcasts and mm -hmm. taken in the media that the public is generating and mm -hmm. doing some work to bridge the digital divide. Mm -hmm. So have focus groups and hear people's feedback. There's a request for comment feature on the front end. Mm -hmm. um, and it's like by incorporating your content and organizing mm -hmm. it so every single point of view is steel manned, mm -hmm. um, you can see what is suggested to be the most steel manned, evidence driven, strongest argument policy. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have any, like, I, I believe you once used the phrase a tiger with no teeth. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I feel like that's the same too. It's like, it's just mm -hmm. an offering of saying through this methodology and mechanism, mm -hmm. this could be policy that's mm -hmm. supported. And it would have to. Mm -hmm. you know, have the support mm -hmm. of people in order yeah, for but, it to... Yeah, but in the Vita one, as well as the joint process, the teeth uh, is the legislators and the ministers. Mm -hmm. So if they pre-commit to accept whatever result uh, that's produced in a fair way, uh, then um, basically they, that becomes the teeth, right? So, so Uber, of course, negotiates in good faith. But the reason why Uber is now a Taiwan taxi company is because if they don't do so, it is the astronomical, uh, I think, highest in Asia fine uh, backed by a law wow. uh, that institutes the, the V Taiwan um, resolutions, right? So so that's the teeth. And, and that takes, of course, at our current representative system, the legislators to pre-commit to implement the teeth part uh, of the taiga, right? But on the other hand, uh, it's of tremendous benefit to the legislature because they, they don't want to be all teeth and no tiger, right? That's a skeleton or something, fossil, <laughs> because then they would not be, be rapid and agile enough to meet the ever-changing, emerging uh, demands uh, of the new technologies on 
social norms. Uh, and with Vital and Join, they can say, here is a co-evolving social norm, and we all already agree on it, including Uber drivers. Uh, so here's this astronomical fine, right? So so that's that's the, the tease. Uh, so so what, what I was trying to, to say is that may, maybe it's not a, a methodological or epistemological difference of our method. Uh, ultimately, it, it's because uh, the, the, the tease after the Vital or Join process it was already there. There, there's a sense of pre-commitment, and that that creates the incentive for people to to join, uh, pun intended, the, the join platform because that's the only place they can get guaranteed ministerial level response, and uh, they can of course cite all the social media, YouTube videos, and, and things like that. At the end of the day, though, it has to be the process that's uh, pre-committed on by the ministers and mayors. Right. Um, we've been we've had some success working at the local level in mm -hmm. creating logical decision making mm -hmm. models mm -hmm. by doing a process of organizing content and putting it into mm -hmm. more logical proofs. Um, and then, I mean, the only hope that we had in the United States is potentially offering the information through the Congressional Revenue Service, which is mm -hmm. how mm -hmm. some politicians in the United States get their information. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, I've I've um, had concerns that uh, the success of Taiwan can't assume mm -hmm. the same premises for the United States in terms mm -hmm. of uh, it being uh, in Taiwan a young democracy, seems mm -hmm. to be a very tech-savvy culture, mm -hmm. um, responsive government, mm -hmm. and I'm not so sure we can assume the same in the United States. Mm -hmm. um, so last time I checked, I think, I think this was some years ago, B Taiwan had about mm -hmm. um, hundreds of thousands of users. Has it increased since then? I, I think I heard mm -hmm. you say that Join had about half the population, which is like an uh, Now, it's the Join is now over 30 million visits. So, so more than population, but uh, of course, people may, uh, you know, uh, raise two or many petitions, and there's of course people outside mm -hmm. of Taiwan who that that joins the joint platform. So, so join has doubled uh, in traffic uh, in in the past couple years. Uh, and congratulations. Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, thank you. But uh, what I was trying to say is that uh, we, we say that we're we're V Taiwan inspired processes because fundamentally V Taiwan is about research. It's about mm -hmm. exploring uh, the configurations. Uh, but the, the uh, main distinguishing characteristics of Taiwan was that it's not run by the, by the civil service. It's not staffed by the public uh, civil servants. So basically, it belongs to whomever who want to try new things. Uh, so the, the Vietnam folks, for example, uh, worked, um, I think this year, uh, with the legislators and their staff, chief of staffs, uh, on open parliament plan. That is to say, to change the way the legislature itself interacts with people and things like that. Uh, but but then it, it becomes meta, right? It, it's not about specific measures anymore. It's about how to transform the way that the legislature itself works. Um, mm -hmm. and, and, and so and so, I, I don't think uh, we we then at that time uh, at that point can count you know the number of proposals or number of engaged citizens and so on because it's a different game altogether. Uh, okay. But but what Vita was circa twenty fifteen is doing uh, is now uh, the joint platforms uh, purview. Got it. So do you think that um, you know the uh, technology that was built off of Polis mm -hmm. has any limitations when it comes to public mm -hmm. deliberation on issues? Well, Polis is. Just a uh, and well, I say just, but it's it's a lot. But it, fundamentally, it's just a uh, a wiki survey, right? So it's not unlike any survey. But the only thing is that people uh, are incentivized. There's a high basic reproduction number uh, of of ideas that are created by people as part of the surveys. Uh, issues uh, instead of relying on a few elites to predetermine uh, what's being surveyed. Uh, that's its main insight. So uh, within that, uh, its limitations is exactly the same as survey technology. Because mm. broadly speaking, it's still part of the survey technology suite. Right? Got it. So, so it's, a, it's a much better survey, much more funnier survey, a uh, survey that people would organically share, uh, and uh, a survey that people would say, oh, I'll recommend this survey to a, to a friend, which is, which is great, uh, but, but it suffers from exactly the same limitation as any other survey uh, methodologies suffer in the broad scheme of things. Okay, got it. So I, I tried to um, get Google to translate the join platform so I could mm -hmm. look to see if there was a deliberation element and how it was being applied. Because mm -hmm. I was really curious about like how sophisticated the comment 
Mm-hmm. the commenting could possibly be mm-hmm. if there was an inability to create threads, which I think was mm-hmm. like an anti-trolling mechanism. It's mm-hmm. just like people are submitting comments and then, you know, it, it's graphed out and people mm-hmm. are voting. Mm-hmm. And so like what we find in our work is that oftentimes public rhetoric is very ambiguous in its language. Mm-hmm. So like, for example, if people are arguing about nuclear reactor safety in mm-hmm. the United States, nuclear reactor could mean 53 different specs. And if they're talking about mm-hmm. safety, it's like, okay, which part of it are you talking about? The spent fuel cells, the reactor itself, like mm-hmm. the, the the waste storage, you know, the waste mm-hmm. transportation mechanism. And then what do you mean mm-hmm. by safety? Is it that like mm-hmm. an aircraft carrier can't like cause a meltdown by like blowing into it? Or like <laughs> we don't want to run away meltdown from like water not being pumped out? Like it, like to actually argue in depth about the name or even understand something in depth, it requires like unpacking how vague our language mm-hmm. tends to be, especially in political mm-hmm. rhetoric. And so mm-hmm. I was really curious if, if Taiwan found a solution to that, um, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. to that level of deliberation. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we, we just had a referendum about our fourth nuclear plant. Uh, so oh. I, I'm, I'm, I'm very much aware of the dynamic you're, you're saying. I, I used to sidestep the, the controversy simply saying, hey, the, I, when I say nuclear reactor, I mean the sun, right? So, <laughs> <laughs> right which is a fusion reactor. But anyway. Exactly, yeah, exactly. Right, so um, yeah, so, so of course that leads nowhere, uh, as we all know. Um, so yeah, the, the way we, we fix this uh, is quite simple. Um, it, it's the, the very simple nature of crowdsourcing. The, the successful crowdsourcing as well as crowdfunding topics tend to have what I call the fast, fair, and fun, right? Th- these are the three pillars. Um, mm-hmm. So um, it, it, it's fast. So it, it means that it, it responds uh, in an agile way to the emergent issue, not a like four decade, five decade old structural issue. It, it's fair because people who participate believe they can get something out of it. Uh, and there's a strong incentive uh, to basically uh, pre-commit equal amount of attention uh, vis-a-vis the attention that people who participate. Uh, and it's fun, meaning that the topic itself, as chosen by the uh, initiator themselves, uh, has a high basic reproduction number, uh, but but we don't need to mandate how exactly to get the fun part through because it's um, it's by selection bias, right? Uh, the the <laughs> citizens' initiative that doesn't have a higher than one basic reproduction number uh, are like unsuccessful virus mutations. Uh, they they, do, they don't, don't go anywhere. Uh, and the, the things that go viral, well, that's because they're viral, right? So so um, so. Uh, by the time that they gather 5,000 signatures or the participatory budgeting uh, raises a sufficient profile to warrant a vote uh, or so on and so forth, uh, by definition, they already found something uh, that resonates with people in a specific way. So, so it's solved not by kind of uh, brilliant, intelligent um, design of any kind, uh, but rather by grassroots uh, collective intelligence. Got it. I mean, do you... Do you imagine that there's any type of limitation on that? Because mm-hmm. something that I'm I'm always interested in is, uh, you know, in the United States, we've got a very, it seems, or it mm-hmm. is argued that we have a very polarized um, information ecology mm-hmm. and that there are interests in propagandizing the public through media mm-hmm. and public marketing campaigns and things like that. Mm-hmm. So even if there is consensus and energy towards a specific end, like, for example, like the anti-nuclear um, sentiment in the United States has been strong for a long time. It's It seems to be like tapering off a little bit, but it begs the question, like, is that really informed by something that's evidence-based or is it informed by effective marketing campaigns and rhetoric that's readily given to individuals and even, you know, evidence studies, these sorts of things, but taken out of the full context of the conversation as a whole, it may sound like it's evidence driven, mm-hmm. but it may just be cherry picked content combined with rhetoric and um, you know, uh, motivated by fear that's driven by money in, in, in politics, essentially. Mm-hmm. Um, and so do you, is it just that maybe Taiwan has a different culture than the United States? Or do you see a platform that's uh, or organizing ideas around consensus could could be applied even in a deeply polarized information environment that's polluted with lots of money? So uh, the the uh, fourth nuclear plant, uh, I think the, the Contra uh, has four million votes. Uh, and uh, uh, the, the Pro uh, is, I think, two, 200K less. Uh, but wow. still, it's, it's a very tight race. Uh, and, and 
I mean, uh, like the Swiss referendums, right? Uh, people accept the, the legitimacy of the result, of course, but because our results are binding for only two years, so uh, whomever loses doesn't really lose. Uh, they have two years to, to gather more evidence to, to convince the, the other side. So, so um, I think that the point here is about iteration cycle. If you allow for a short enough, like less than four years, two years, uh, or uh, in, in terms of regulations on joint platform, 60 days, and so on. So it's like a heartbeat. Uh, people mm -hmm. who, who felt that uh, the, the marketing rhetorics, whatever, won the day, um, they, they don't have to be pessimistic because they then can say, okay, uh, let, let's try it out for, for two years and, and see where it leads us. And then if, if they're actually right and the people who, who won actually were, were, were wrong, uh, then within two years we'll get more evidence in the um, side of the people who initially lost uh, the referendum or, or whatever other process. But on the other hand, if it's uh, irrevocable, of course, then uh, people are motivated to, to go all in when it comes uh, to propaganda disinformation and things like that but when tapered uh, off on like two year two year two year or one year one year iterations like uh, participatory budgeting tend to be um, then mm -hmm. there there really is no incentive to to go all in on this information on any particular one because uh, well you, you can just lose it all the next year got it I could see that working for a lot of issues and there's cer there seems to be some things that require really long time scales so I don't know I would love if it's possible to see the deliberation mm -hmm. among the Taiwanese people about the mm -hmm. nuclear oh, yeah, reactor. Here, here, here is a the deliberation, uh, uh, and it's on Polis, actually. It's run by a, a media. Uh, and, uh, uh, of course, it's in Mandarin, but uh, it's in plain text. So I believe your machine learning <laughs> algorithms will work. Yeah. Thank you so much. Oh, I'm so excited mm -hmm. to hear that. So um, perfect. So what I was saying is, it seems as though with many, many issues, um, that does seem to have the right incentive structure to um, either have people you know, go all in or not when it comes to like propagandizing the public. Um, with certain things that like, for example, investing in the building of a nuclear reactor or a nuclear power plant, um, some of those build cycles can be anywhere from like five to, unfortunately, we've seen up to 15 years. Uh, so it, it seemed as though for some things, being able to quickly flip-flop the decision-making, mm -hmm. um, I mean, maybe that even tapers off. Like society itself has become aware of the issue mm -hmm. enough and eventually more decided so that mm -hmm. after going back and forth and like mm -hmm. issuing funding, taking mm -hmm. off funding, eventually mm -hmm. they settle on something. Mm -hmm. Interesting. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and uh, I think uh, the, the initiator of the pro-nuclear force plant initiator after uh, losing the referendum by a small margin. Uh, he said, well, it, it's a sign that uh, we need to look into small uh, reactors. Uh, that that can mm. actually, uh, as you said, <laughs> shorten the, the build time. Because uh, I think one of the dividing points of the force plant, a specific plant, not the nuclear uh, strategy in general, uh, was that a uh, potential fault line was discovered mm. after uh, it's being constructed and which creates tremendous pressure because there's no way to, to move things, right? But, but right. With, with smaller reactors, it's conceivable you can put it on a ship or something, right? So, and which doesn't suffer from the same fault line uh, structure. So, uh, as you said, uh, I think this zigzagging at the end of the day converges towards something that's sensible for both sides, that both sides can live with. Fantastic. Okay, and this is all in the V Taiwan version of Polis? Uh, no, this is uh, just in the, it's, this is just Polis. So what, what I pasted you, the second link, uh, is from okay. Reader, uh, and it's a civic tech um, enabled uh, media, a, a new media as we, we call it here. Uh, and uh, uh, the, the new media is run independently. Uh, it's not sponsored by the state or anything, but it played the role that VTaiwan plays. It's VTaiwan inspired. I mean, the, the people doing this were, were all part of the initial VTaiwan conversation. Uh, so uh, it's not branded VTaiwan, but basically it's taking the referendum conversations, the uh, public uh, forums and, and debates, uh, and then setting up a parallel um, HackMD reader-based police structure uh, that uh, finds the common points uh, between the people who feel very differently when they hear the debates. Got it. Amazing. And then I, I I'm sorry if you already told me this, but how how did you get so much? Um, you know, I think it was 30 million mm -hmm. monthly active yeah. users on Join. How did mm -hmm. that happen? Mm -hmm. um, 
that's a really good question. Uh, the 13 million was visits, by the way, so we, we don't Visit. know, but okay. Um, so I think two things. First, as I said, um, the petitions that captures people's imagination uh, and resonates uh, across the, the country. Um, for example, I'll, I'll use a couple of examples. Um, there, there was a petition a couple of years ago where more than 8,000 people signed to change the time zone of Taiwan to that of plus nine. We're currently at plus eight, uh, the same as Japan. Uh, and uh, equally, there's also a petition more than uh, 8,000 people strong saying we should remain in plus eight and not change our time zone to plus nine. Uh, and so the collaboration meeting, we invited the petitioner uh, from both sides uh, on a face-to-face -face, uh, dialogue. And, and both of them want to see Taiwan as more unique in the world. And then using evidence-based uh, logic, we calculated to the dollar uh, how much exactly it would cost if we change our time zone, and, and how much recurring cost uh, it would incur uh, on our, our systems, and, and all for what? Uh, all for you know, forcing people from other jurisdictions to change their watch uh, once they land to Taiwan and getting maybe 15 minutes of international fame. Uh, but uh, of course it's not worth it, and the watch auto just nowadays anyway. Uh, so um, it, it's not worth it, but it's worth to invest that amount of money to making Taiwan seen as more unique in the world, that both sides agree. So they then brainstorm about how to market uh, our LGBTIQ uh, friendly, uh, marriage equality, human right, open government, and so on and so forth. Uh, and and it, it went very friendly. Uh, and, and so it's one of those very rare things that both sides eventually are in vehement agreement. Right? So, but, but it's not possible unless we have this very strong science-based, logic-based, dollar amount-based uh, calculation of a cost and benefit uh, analysis. So it is right. sort of a model case. But, but on, on that case, a Learn, right? We, we've got tens and thousands of literally petitioners and their friends and families uh, paying attention uh, to the resolution of this issue. Uh, so that's one example. Uh, another example was um, that uh, there, there was a young um, student in, in high school, uh, but we didn't know because we allow pseudonyms. They're authenticated only through SMS. Um, so this uh, I love elephant and elephant love me person uh, said we should ban plastic straws on the takeouts of our national drink, the bubble tea, among others, uh, and, and which captured people's attention because at that time there was a uh, viral picture of a sea turtle being choked by a, a straw or something like that. Uh, and, and then it gathered um, in no time a very high amount of uh, signatures. But when, when I met the petitioner, uh, I, I, I was uh, delighted to find that she's, I think, just turned 17. Uh, and uh, asked her, uh, why, why do you raise such a popular uh, petition topic that gets everybody talking about it? And, and she said, well, it's our civics class assignment. So it turns out that the high school teachers, civics teachers, uh, does it in the part of their civics assignment to find something that's viral on join. Uh, so for a while, uh, more than one quarter of petitions on the join platform were somehow related to the people under 18's uh, rights, wow. right? So like like they, they want to go to school later in the day, they want to sleep more, and we got the, the sleep experts uh, to uh, share the, the latest research uh, that basically says if you don't have sufficient sleep, you can't really learn anyway, <laughs> and things like that. And, and that's way the parents and uh, teachers' opinion uh, to uh, exactly as you said, that as more evidence uh, gets disclosed, it's harder to have polarized arguments uh, in a sense once it's absorbed by by both sides and so on. So, so that get all the high school students talking about, right? So when I, uh, a couple of weeks ago, went to a senior high to give uh, a interactive lecture, one of the top voted Slido question, which is like join, but uh, for face-to-face uh, -face conversations, right? So the top voted anonymous Slido question is that why is the school preparing for Minister Tang a, uh, it's not a, uh, a very uh, large straw, but it's a plastic straw, it's plastic. So uh, why, why are we, you know, um, um, uh, signing off a uh, petition and then acting uh, opposite toward it? Is that what we want from our civics education? Uh, and then I, I immediately just, you know, the, ripped the, the, the plastic cover off and started drinking directly from it. Anyway, so <laughs> <laughs> so, so uh, anecdotes like that, of course, uh, go viral uh, on social media. And, and right. each one brings more visits to a joint platform. 
Got it. Okay, and then just to uh, check my understanding, the collection of the evidence-based and mm -hmm. logic-based argumentation and the bringing in uh, of sleep experts, mm -hmm. that's something that's facilitated by mm -hmm. the people running this platform. That's right, and we have a, a regulation. We have a regulation on exactly how to do that, and and interestingly, it's in it's in English. So <laughs> uh, feel free to to explore the the uh, participation officer uh, mechanism, the directions, uh, all more than one hundred uh, collaborative meetings uh, that follow the process, including the guidelines, principles, and so on. Thank you uh -huh. so much. Mm -hmm. I am so excited to read this. Very fascinating. Mm -hmm. Great. Okay, well, I, I know we're over time. You That's mentioned fine. that you may have additional That's time, fine. but yeah, I, I don't want to take up too much of it. I think mm -hmm. I've had all of my questions answered, mm -hmm. and I really mm -hmm. want to dig into the platforms. Um, so thank you very, mm -hmm. very much. Mm -hmm. And then please, if, if there's any, um, you know, uh, any, if there is anything that comes up to you about the limitations mm -hmm. of logic-based deliberation, I mean, I think I've, like, really taken away a lot to think mm -hmm. of. I, I hope you won't hesitate to just correct my thinking on these things. Mm -hmm. Well, I think the only point I want to make is that um, the anecdotes that people bring back to their communities after a successful dialogue, uh, that is really key. Logic by itself right. is not viral. So, right. so uh, what we need really is to learn from the conspiracy theories. Uh, take their kind of mRNA strand out, <laughs> and then, and then uh, repackage it. So so it's um, I just uh, read on on XKCD the webcomic uh, that the, we should manufacture a COVID plus nineteen, not minus nineteen, <laughs> so that it's even more viral and cures everyone and infects <laughs> a viral vaccine, oh. so to speak. <laughs> well, that's so cute. Um, oh. So we, I will say that right now we, uh -huh. we do have full funding to map the nuclear energy debate in the United States. Mm -hmm. When it's a completed project in our existing methodology, I would love to share it with you and get your feedback about how to maybe create reactions mm -hmm. that could be anecdotes that are brought to the community mm -hmm. and you know mm -hmm. e even sincerely get feedback about the utility mm -hmm. of organizing knowledge in that way, potentially mm -hmm. even incorporating it into polis as well. Mm -hmm. But I'd, I'd love to follow up with you if you've got time later. Mm -hmm. Yeah, certainly. So, yeah, live long and prosper. Bye. Thank you. You too. <laughs> Take care. Bye.